Welcome to this screencast about Convert Plus 2. In this video I will give you a general overview about the basic functions and the layout of Convert Plus 2. You see here the main screen on the right bottom corner there's a product list that can be imported from a CSV file with certain columns that can be defined by our customer. In that case we have a product code, a product description and a color, but there could be more visible and also more invisible columns inside this product database. This is the list of products that we can create converting jobs from. We can do that either by scanning those product IDs with a barcode scanner and they will be automatically put in the preview production queue up here or we can select them by double clicking them in the list or we can use filters and a full text search filters means depending on the design of your product database file you might be able to filter down from manufacturer to series to color and then you have one product remaining which you can select by double click again. Also of course a full text search is available. As Convert Plus 2 is normally running on big touch screens all um, keyboards are uh, made in a way that they can be easily used with a finger on a touch screen. As a, in this test setup, we uh, do not have a converting machine connected to that software. We are not using the normal buttons at the machine to control the Convert Plus 2 software, but we have this touch button here to simulate um, a machine next to the software, which is not actually the case. So once we have selected several items that we want to put in a production queue we can uh, change quantities and we can change lengths and also units of all items in that list units can also be mixed between metric and imperial system and we can also change the actually converting mode here from the typical roll mode for example to a sheet mode and then make 100 sheets of 20 centimeters from that material. In that preview production queue we also can edit those items for slitting patterns which will I explain in a different video. For that overview we only look at the basic functions, so if you are ready with the items here in that preview list, you can create the production queue out of that list by clicking that button here. And now um, those items cannot be edited anymore, they only can be deleted on a single base or the complete list can be dumped. There are two ways to operate from here. One is by scanning a material barcode which we recommend as the standard process to scan the barcode label on the roll that will be used next on the Nepata converting machine. If you're not able to scan a barcode label because there is no uh, label on the roll or it is not readable then you can use that green hook here um, to confirm manually which will then in the lock file of the software um, be stated as a manual confirmed job and not confirmed by scanning. Um, another thing that I want to show you in that uh, at that point is um, when you have, we can add more uh, jobs here when you have for example two jobs for the same material that go either to different customers or are of different lengths or quantities or whatever and um, you're scanning or manual confirming that material then the software will always stack those jobs together um, 
to save you time from bringing the raw material back to the warehouse and bringing it to the machine again. So this is always done automatically and now you see that row production one first piece of two is um, ready. If we ha would have used the scanning here probably the barcode would always also have contained the rest roll length of the mother roll we are using here but um, as we did a manual confirm process um, we have to enter the length of the mother roll here manually and I will set that to 25 meters so we have some value to use. Those in those um, fields here you would normally see the communication between software and machine which is empty now as I said there is no machine connected so um, either if the connection is working normally or if there is an exception you will always be able to read that from here these bars here stand for the the mother role and the customer role um, here it says that one label will be printed for the mother role after both of those jobs here are done. Um, you can set this also to a different number so if you always want to receive two labels for the mother role for example for the box and for the role itself you can change the value here and also for the customer role you might print more than one label for the customer if you just enter it here. This button here means that you um, will receive a label for every single job that is produced. For example, for this job down here where we get those 100 sheets, we might not want 100 labels, but probably only one label for the complete package of 100 sheets. Then we can switch to the single label mode or we can even turn off label printing completely. And if you click again, then we're back again for the sequential label printing mode which is the normal mode to operate. Those buttons here are meant for manual printing of the labels um, if we need them for some reason beside the automatically triggered printing when using the Neparta machine and this here um, is the, the button to open the label editing mode which is also part of a different video. Now um, in that test setup of the software here pressing the green button will be the same like um, an actual converting job at an Aparta machine so once I click the green button the first of the two jobs here is already done and if I click again then also the second roll of this first line you remember there was quantity 2 is done and now second job here is um, the current job and if I click again then both of the jobs are done and I would have received this rest length label now with the corresponding meters remaining on that roll. Besides the product-based operation of the Conrad Plus 2 software, there's also the possibility to use an orders-based job import, which works with CSV files of your ERP system containing certain information like the picking note number, probably customer name, customer ID, and so on. And in a different video, we will show you how to import, how to set up this import and how to use it in Conrad Plus 2 so you don't need this single scanning of single positions or single items but you can scan a complete order and then use either all of the items in the order or you can say no this one I don't need and this here I have ready from the shelf and uh, then once you've finished you can I will, I will dump the list here, then you can um, make a production queue right out of the order from this customer and those two items that we marked with no remain here. The second way of releasing jobs for the production is beside that scanning mode, it's a sequential mode that will work um, like always the top 
line here will be the next job that the software will send to the machine. If you want to change the positions of those items here, you can just sort them by and clicking them one line up or to the top or to the bottom. And as I said before, we recommend to use the scanning mode because it helps you to avoid shipment mistakes by mixing up materials or colors or whatever because you really have to scan and confirm that the material you're using is the right one for that particular job. There's also the possibility to oh sorry I have to confirm one line first there's also the possibility to save a batch number or a lot number within one production job. I will um, enter one manually here. So from now on, on all barcodes, and if you also design your label like, like that, um, also in printed text you will be able to read the lot number and the batch number from the customer labels and also from the warehouse labels. And when you use, and when you use that role for the next time also, this batch number can be scanned again and again, so as long as you're using that row, the batch number will always be given to the next customer labels and mother role labels. I entered this manually now, but usually on new boxes of vinyl and other material from the manufacturers you will find the batch numbers on barcodes there so you can use the, those barcodes to scan the batch number here once and after that um, as I said they will be printed on the on the labels in in a barcode anyway so you can scan them from there. At the moment I have to open that feature here manually but um, you can also set the software to automatically force the operator to enter a batch number here if you want to have consistent tracking of batch numbers within your vinyl film logistics. So that was all for the overview. Um, I hope you have a look at the other videos for the special features of Conrad Plus 2 as well and uh, thank you for your attention.